What is going on guys? Welcome back to our second episode here with Schalke in our career mode, episode 61 overall. And today we're going to be signing a few more players to add to our already growing collection. So, not only have we got a few new signings coming in, one of the players, which was one of the most liked comments of last episode, was Cy Gankov. And you guys asked me to keep hold of him and play him at cam. So that is what we are going to do. As I said to you guys, I will do whatever you guys want. Now, in terms of the players we already sold, I did say at the back end of the last episode, apologies if you've got an attachment to them. Um, at the time, I just went through and decided to sell, so that is the reason why. Today, though, on top of the transfers that we have coming in and going out, we have also got our first two games of the season, where we face off A against uh, Cologne in our debut. Then we go on to face Bayern at the Allianz. So, some really good stuff coming your way today. But to talk about very quickly then the signings, the first one, that I wanted, we knew it. We knew we needed a right back, so I went ahead and I looked at your comments and one of the heavily suggested ones was Trent Alexander-Arnold, so we tried to make him our number one priority target. Went out and tried to give them originally Otavio and a little bit of money to Chelsea. They wanted like 50 odd million plus Otavio, which would have taken his overall fee to like 70 something. So I instantly said no. Eventually, after a long conversation with Chelsea, we agreed on Otavio plus 28.5, I think it was. And we made the signing of Trent Alexander-Arnold. So I was quite happy to do that, to say the least. So he was the first of the incomings. Having a quick look through, I found that I needed another centre defensive midfield type player. And I found Danilo, who's playing for Wolverhampton Wanderers. And he has a release clause of £15.8 million. So I went ahead and activated that release clause. Feeling that at the time, as he's not going to be a starting player in our side and would only sit on the bench, that that was a good enough fee to pay for a player that was 83 rated. Especially given the circumstances. On a release clause that cheap, you can't go wrong. And the, uh, the wages as well that we give him are next to nothing. So I just decided that this would be the best sort of scenario. Bring him in and have him on the bench in case we need to use him. Obviously played with Wolverhampton Wanderers quite a while now. And uh, that release clause was activated by us. So he comes in to be the second of the signings that we look at today, adding to the list of Trent Alexander-Arnold. Following those two, I needed a backup goalkeeper. Now, there were suggestions in the comments section, Lunin being one of them. Unfortunately, I didn't have a lot of money left in the window. We only had £23 million left, so I had to think about a cheaper alternative if I wanted to bring in the second most liked comment of yesterday's episode, although whenever it was, and that was Noah Gordon. So, I tried to get as much out of my budget as I possibly could at this stage, Having signed a free agent goalkeeper that I'm going to be training up, I looked at bringing in Noah Gordon, offering Ralph Farman as part of the deal and 29.5 million, which eventually we agreed on 30 for my former club in Inter Milan. So on top of the three signings, it looked like Gordon was on his way in as well. And that was exactly how it panned out. So four signings, ladies and gentlemen, that ends off postcom though. Let's jump to live. Well, guys, it's time to make our Bundesliga debut with our new side here. We're about to take on Cologne in just a few moments' time. But I had to show you this here. Defenders to watch in 2023 and three Inter Milan players are on the list. First up, Varane of Real Madrid. We've got De Vrij of Inter Milan. We've got Hernandez of Inter Milan. And we've got De Ligt of Inter Milan, which is kind of uh, a bit ridiculous. Predicted finish of seventh place as well is what we have been told we're going to get. Key player Jose Maria Jimenez which I think we will do better than that. So that's personally just my opinion. We'll see if that's going to be the case. They've got Hoffenheim finishing in fifth. So, uh, yeah. But we are about to make our debut. We've got a full-strength side, and it's hopefully going to be a good one, as already we are still getting offers for players. Now, I know a few comments in the comment section was wondering why we sold so many players. The reason for that is because I wanted to kind of make my own unique spin on the team, if you will. And I did say at the back end of that video that I apologise to anybody who has, like, an attachment to any players we may have sold on. Obviously, it wasn't my intention to uh, frustrate you or anything. It's just we decided to do it down to the fact that I wanted my own unique spin on bringing in like players that weren't here previously. We've pretty much got a new squad all around, apart from Saigankov, McKenny, and Mandrangara. So they are the only players who were here last season who are going to be named for the start of this game here against Cologne when we go into it. Not only is it our debut, but it's also coming at home as well at the Veltins Arena. That is the side on your screen that we are going to be playing. Frank Brown starts in goal. Grimaldo, Stark, Jimenez and Alexander-Arnold at right back. McKenny, Mandragara in the two midfield spots. hudson Adoy, Cy Gankov, Richarlison and Timo Werner up front on his lonesome. Kept hold of a few players today that I was going to sell. That was down to your comments. The most liked comment of last episode 
was to keep hold of Saigankov and play him at Cam. I hope I'm saying his name right. If I'm not, I apologize. Do let me know in the comment section um, how you actually say it, because that will trigger a lot of people if you don't, and then I keep saying it wrong. So yeah, just let me know with a little comment if I'm getting it right or not. And uh, for the purpose of that, this episode, I will be calling him Saigankov. Such a cool stadium, the Veltins Arena. I'm glad to be back playing football with Schalke. It's been a long time since FIFA 17 days when we took over in there. So it's kind of interesting to have them back. The blue kit as well looks pretty cool. But we're going to get a feel for the team a little bit before we really try and go at this uh, and attack at this Cologne side. Richarlison on the right-hand side. Obviously, hudson Doy on the other side. We've got Richarlison sending Alexander-Arnold already in down the right, looking for the cross. Masuaku puts it into touch. Bright day, it seems, as well. Saigankov from the corner. Little one round it. Going to find Stark, who lays it off to Grimaldo. Grimaldo pulling it on the left foot. Can we get a cross in at the end of this, though? Grimaldo continues into the space, tries to whip it in. It's bouncing around, and we actually can't get underneath it. Here is Richarlison, that five-star weak foot, remember, could come in clutch here if we need it. Richarlison's ball through. hudson Doy gets it under control still. Callum hudson Doy can't find the shot, though, so we'll play Mandragara, who finds Werner. Werner on the inside. Timo Werner finishes it off as well. Brought back into Bundesliga football after a spell out with PSG, I believe it was, we got him from. And a year left on his deal at the part of Princes. We paid next to nothing for the German. And he's back in the Bundesliga and already off the mark with his first of the season. Timo Werner not cleanly struck by any means, but it finds its way into that bottom corner. 32 league goals or something stupid is what we managed with uh, Lotoro Martinez in the, South, in the Calcio A, sorry, with Inter Milan. How are we going to do with Timo Werner at Schalke? Well, we're only 12 minutes in, is it? 22, and he's off the mark. First goal in the Bundesliga for Timo Werner, our new number nine. Get in. Such a good finish from the young man as well. Now at 27, so not as young as he is when you start the series off. But obviously, Werner is one of those players that you have to check out if you haven't already. Such a good goal-scoring talent as already. hudson Adoy looking to get his gun on the front foot again. Looking for the run of Timo Werner. Got pace to burn as well as Werner. But this time, Lemos has done really well for his side. Stopping us with another potential attack there. Because you know the pace that Werner's got. That ball somehow still in play as Conti will pick it up and look for the cross, which is put in. But TAA brings it down. And Asa tried to force the pass. Didn't get anywhere near it. And now it's going to come back at us. Lovely ball through. Colombian with a chance. Nacho Gil puts it into touch. And we just about get away with that. Mandragara, Richarlison, Saigankov. Look at Werner again. Werner's in again. Timo Werner for number two. Werner's in for number two. And it's the same finish. Then he opened up the scoring with the last time. Schalke 2, Cologne 0, Werner's second of the game. And that is why we brought him back, ladies and gentlemen. How cool is the sight to see Werner playing back in the Bundesliga in this all blue kit of Schalke. Look at that for a pass through as well from Sai Gankov, I believe it was. The finish, though, from Werner is typical Werner style. Bottom corner, no chance at all for the keeper. Two goals in 11 minutes. <laughs> you guys knew when I brought this kid back, that we were going to be off the mark with him early doors. To be fair, though, it's not like we've had it all our way. They have had a couple of moments, our opponents. They could have easily got a chance or two themselves. Mandragara picks up the ball in our own half, and we find Richarlison. TAA giving him the run down the right-hand side. Alexander-Arnold looking for a good cross. He's got 99 crossing at this stage, guys, as well, as he puts it in towards the box. But Horn does well enough to push it out, and Schalke can't create a third goal. Conti. Up against Grimaldo. Beating him twice now. Lost the ball a couple of times through Grimaldo on that left-hand side. The ball over the top. Weston McKenney's not going to get there. And Conti will have the opportunity to put the ball in. TAA goes across. And blocks it vitally by the looks of things. Wow. Really good move from our opponents. And it could have easily been a goal back for them. As they put the corner in towards the mixer. And it's going to be cleared away by Grimaldo. Oh, lovely ball. Richarlison's going to pick it up as well. And look to switch the play out towards hudson Adoy. Gets quite lucky to still have the ball. And I'm not even sure what that was from Callum hudson Adoy, But he's got it. We've got it nonetheless anyway. Still with hudson Adoy now as well. Trying to do a bit of trickery to get him on the inside. And it's going to be half time here at the Veltins Arena. Schalke 2 up at the break. Courtesy of the double from Timo Werner in our debut as manager. Some of the other results around as well. Freiburg holding Bayern at the minute to a 1-1 draw in their game. No changes at the break from me though. Going to leave it the same for now. Hudson Adoy towards Mina. Mina. I'm not sure about him at the minute because he's struggling to really make an impact, Santi Mina, but we're going to use him again. Hudson Adoy towards Werner. 
Werner gets the ball. We'll find Gramado. Good area again. We need to start using this ball when we're in these areas effectively to find the finish. It's all a bit too intricate from us at the minute as Mandragara again looks to Richarlison. Richarlison still got it. But you see, my problem is at the minute is trying to actually make a chance from it. Noah Gordon going to come on for Richarlison as the change comes through with six minutes to play here in this game. Conti's coming off for the away side and uh, we've actually got a free kick in a good area here. Question mark is though, who do we give this free kick to? Alexander-Arnold or Grimaldo? I feel like I want the right foot of Alexander-Arnold but I also like Grimaldo's stats. What we're saying, could we get it in from this angle? It's going to be towards the goalkeeper whereas the right foot will be swinging away. I'm going to go with GAA here. We're going to try and put this in the top corner with Trent Alexander-Arnold. Will it work out though? Alexander-Arnold over the wall, off the woodwork. So close to number three. Hudson Adoy towards Werner. Back to Hudson Adoy. Couple of step overs. Hudson Adoy trying to work the way through. And that is the end of the game, guys. 90 minutes played at the Veltins Arena. Schalke 2. Cologne nil. And it came from Timo Werner. Both strikes. Second half, a lot more difficult for us to really create anything. And there we go, shaking the hands of the other man at the dugout. So, uh, yeah, in terms of the game, it was fairly simple for us in the end. There was times when... We were pressed by the opponents, had to defend. Bayern being held by Freiburg to a 2-2 draw is not a great start for them. What is admirable for us as well is the fact that we've managed to keep the clean sheet. Not only have we got the win, both goals coming from our new number nine, but also the clean sheet's there. Napoli want uh, Weston McKenney, which he's not going to be leaving the club. So uh, he stays still. I'm not getting rid of him. Angel Correa's concerned, and so am I actually, because with the new additions to the team, I'm going to be honest, I don't see how he gets in the lineup. So, for the most part, we'll have to wait and see. We've got a game coming up in a few moments, though. The second and final one of today. And uh, I'm intrigued to show you who this is against. So, a couple of growths out of a few players. First up, Hudson Adoy going to 83. See if he sticks at 83 or goes back down. And he has stayed at 83. So, yeah, that's not too bad. However, our next opponents are upon us, guys. And as you can see... We are taking on Bayern, two games in to the season. Oh, that is a massive offer. Woo! I know you guys want me to keep hold of Cy Gankov, but 60 million is unbelievable from Burnley. What is that as a deal? I feel like I, I, feel like I don't want to sell him because you guys want me to keep him. So, in a negotiation, I'm just going to ask for a stupid amount that I know they won't match. Like, 95 million quid. If they match this, they're absolutely stupid. I was going to say, there's, there's, there's no way they match it. Um, but, in terms of an offer, that was big for him. And had I have wanted to sell him, I would have actually probably accepted that. Anyway, doesn't matter, he stays. And we've got FC Bayern up next. It looks like the draw as well has been made for the Champions League. So we'll check that out after this game. Here we go then, ladies and gentlemen. We are into this one. I really am excited for the game against FC Bayern. We could go with the alternate green kit, actually. That looks pretty sick. But in fact, I think I'm just going to go with the away kit. Werner, off to the mark. Started the season off brilliantly, hasn't he? Allianz Arena is where we're playing. And of course, that is the side that we go into the game with. Bayern dropped points in their first game. A 1-1 draw is what they managed. We obviously won. So, strictly speaking, in that regard, this one is probably going to be the game to watch this weekend or whenever this fixture's played. I'm assuming it would be televised as well. So, I'm just saying that, guys. So, first major proper test here with our new side. And how are we going to stand up to the plate? Looks like they've got Romelu Lukaku leading the line for Bayern. Could be quite tough against him today. If I'm being totally brutally honest, right, their side is not as good as I thought it was. Pjanic leads in terms of the captaincy today. He starts at centre mid, defensive mid. They've gone with a 4-1-4-1. Um, so, obviously, the four at the back, the one in CDM, the four in midfield, and then the one up front is what they've led with. They've got a really sort of attack-minded team. Both of their central midfielders, both attack-minded. They've got Kingsley Coleman on one wing as the ball's already whipped in. And Weston McKenney has to get on it and Bruma will shoot. Straight towards Frank, immediate chance for our opponents. I need to concentrate this because I started the game off talking and I wasn't concentrated and they got a chance immediately. Saigankov keeping on of the ball well. We'll find TAA. 
Uh, where do we go though? Back inside maybe. Werner on the overlap towards Hudson Adoy. Hudson Adoy finding McKenney. McKenney inside the area. McKenney's ball back in. Too easy in the end for Bayern to defend. Hudson Adoy. Hang on a second. Grimaldo's in down the left hand side against his former club. Alejandro Grimaldo towards the box of Bayern Munich. Grimaldo though can't get anything. What is that? I got caught in two minds whether or not I wanted to square it, but there was no one to really play the ball to. So now I was thinking I have to shoot as Hudson Adoy steals it back and finds Sai Gankov. Now we go forward again, but it's so, so tight. Look at the bodies back. As soon as we have a go, I'm trying to get in behind, the gap just closes. Here is now Hudson Adoy though. Hudson Adoy in towards the area. Saved by Neto. Bouncing back out and Sai Gankov puts in the rebound. And we lead here after 30 minutes. Yes! Quite lucky the ball bouncing back. But to be fair, Bayern were too concerned about stopping the cutback. If you watch Hudson Adoy, when he goes in the box here, look at the defender there. He's too, he's too concerned about the cutback, not necessarily trying to stop the shot. In all fairness, Hudson Adoy should finish it. All right, Hudson Adoy should finish the initial chance. But I'm just glad the ball bounced back and the number 11 puts it in. So we lead here at the Allianz. But for how long is the question mark? Start quite lucky to get the ball through, but when we do, we now can have a chance to break. Ball sent down the left-hand side, and it's Saigankov, who will look inside towards Werner. Werner brings it down, and Werner will shoot, and what a block that is. I don't even know who it is who's made it, but fair play whoever it was, because that surely was going to go on target from Werner. And that takes us into half-time. So, the break, fairly even game, in terms of uh, where the ball has been played. We've had four shots, but... You know, we've got to take into account that one of them was to set up Saigankov when Hudson Doi should have finished it. The second one with Werner there was just blocked, and the third one from Hudson Doi we skied. So, uh, yeah, the, the, the shot count there, the chances themselves haven't actually been clear cut. So, so if, you know, you've got to say that although it's it looks dominating for us, it actually, in theory, should actually only be one apiece in terms of chances. But still, we are controlling most of the play here when we get back on the ball, just off it is where we tend to uh, to have to work a little bit harder. And that's poor from Bayern who gives away the ball cheaply. As Saigankov looks towards Richarlison again. We're so quick when we get it as well at attacking that it makes it difficult for defenders. In towards the box we go, dragging it across. And Wallace is there to stop us. Richarlison makes the run for him, allowing him the space in order to move into it. But at the minute, unable to find a real chance as we do find Werner. On side as well, Timo Werner. Werner, brilliant football. Oh, so close to a really nicely worked goal. Werner turning the defence there, gets the drive across, and it was vital, whoever that was who got the touch from Bayern, to step in and stop it. Mandragara from distance now, straight at Neto, and I think this is time for the change to make way. We're going to bring off our cam and Hudson Adoy. We're going to bring on Gordson and Santimina for that. Grimaldo brought down off the ball, but advantage played by the referee, and Marcus Alonso then goes in pretty hefty, but it's going to be a yellow card for Nabry on the way through. Very close game, this one. Not a lot separating us as Weston McKenney stood over the free kick. But I think we're going to go with Alejandro Grimaldo for this one. And try and just put it with a bit of curl in towards an area where we can try and challenge. There is delivery from Grimaldo. It's good! And it's even better, but it's over the top of the crossbar from Santi Mina. Mistimed it, and that's why we put it over. The cross was brilliant from Grimaldo, right where you want it. Keeper came into no man's land, Neto, and got absolutely nowhere near it. And it should have been Schalke with their second of the game. And we win it back. And Santimino will skip over the challenge and find Noah Gordson. Gordson now up against the substitute. But Gordson cuts inside. Finds Richarlison. Richarlison through to Mandragara. Mandragara to finish. And he's put it wide on the near post. If you look at the chances we've had today, they've pretty much all been crafted from counter-attacking moves. And yet, we haven't finished. <sighs> Some big, big wasted opportunities here. Werner... Is that a fairly quiet one today, actually? Oh, nearly a mistake made by Neto. Couldn't reach it, though. And that's a poor pass as Mina steps inside and wins it back. Now Mandragara through towards McKenney. McKenney sees Gordson. Noah Gordson in behind. Noah Gordson will finish. 2-0 Schalke. Mistake from Bayern. And Gordson scores for his new side. And that could be the nail in the coffin for Bayern today, who have not been at the races. But we have not allowed them to play. That's why. The game plan has worked wonders here. We've set it up for us to sit behind the ball and try and counter at them when we win the ball. And that's exactly what has happened. Great finish from Gordson. The power, the finesse, just everything went so well from him. That's his first of the season. 
And overall, as a game goes, performance, tick it off, because this has been brilliant. Men behind the ball sat there, allowed Bayern to have it. And like I said, if you look at the possession start at the end of the game, I guarantee they'll have either even or more than us. Godson. Hold on, ref. I was in with Richarlison. The ball was played and the referee has blown his whistle. Richarlison bursting down the right was in, but it doesn't necessarily matter because we've won the game anyway. And if you look at the match facts, like I said to you, just the one shot, this sin from Bruma at the beginning of the game. They had 53% of the ball did Bayern. But if you look at the way we crafted our chances, eight shots, five on target. We were so fast with the ball that they just couldn't keep up. And it was an unbelievable performance from the boys. Two back-to-back 2-0 -back wins. Weston McKenney with a man of the match performance here as well. I mean, you've just got to admit when you're when you're not at the races, and that was what Bayern weren't today. We we dominated them in nearly every single aspect, Bayern possession. We matched them for work rate, for the ability, and just for the overall wanting to win the game. That, my friends, is where we are going to leave today's video. If you have enjoyed it, a like would be greatly appreciated. As always, thank you all for your continued support on the channel. I really appreciate that. It was madness to see all the support on the last episode of this one as well. If you guys could smash it out again, that would be great. If we could hit 100 likes, I would be much appreciative of that. Uh, Marcus Alonso, who just featured against us, has actually gone to buy Leverkusen. He's left them now. Very, very quick change around for him. Standings-wise, we're second place behind Bayer Leverkusen, having scored four goals, conceded zero. They've scored six and conceded zero. So, yeah, the two sides looking like it's uh, shaping up pretty nicely so far. For Bayern, two, two games, no wins. A draw in their first game against Freiburg and then a loss to Oz is where they see themselves down in 15th place. Not the start they were hoping to see at the beginning of this season. But uh, for us, it's been brilliant. And that is going to be it then. If you are new around here and like what you see, hit that subscribe button, guys. If you want to be notified whenever new videos go live as well, make sure you have the notification bell turned on alongside it. Uh, there should have been another video out this morning. Oh, sorry. Well, this this evening, I guess, at 4 p.m. But um, I actually uploaded the video and had a bit of an issue with copyright. It was uh, one of the issues that popped up beforehand. So I've had to take the video down until I get that sorted and then it hopefully up reupload it. It was the Road to Glory career mode, so it should be all good to go tomorrow. Depending on when it decides to sort itself out, um, I will let you guys know on the community section of the channel, though, up, in, uh, up until that one. However, I hope you all have a great rest of your day. Have a great week upcoming as well, and I will see you all again tomorrow at 4 p.m. for another video, regardless of whether or not it is the Road to Glory career mode or not. Until then, though, guys, see you all again soon. Adios.